Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's Matt Coleman here from Magnify World. As you know, over the coming weeks, we're profiling the top 50 most interesting companies that we've found this year in the emerging technology space. I'm speaking from our Los Angeles studio. We have a very special guest who's usually in California, but she's in Europe at the moment, uh, Inga from the founder and CEO of Tavori. How are you? Hello, Matt. Thanks a lot for having me here today. I'm super excited to have this conversation. So you're usually in San Mateo. Um, I know that uh, you're in St. Petersburg at the moment, um, looking after family and everything else. Um, But how's everything going there anyway? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, also the R&D center for Tvori uh, in St. Petersburg. And we think that this is the right location to have brilliant engineering talent at very affordable cost. So that's why the uh, core team is in San Mateo, meaning that we are doing business development and helping our customers to succeed with Tvori. And the engineering and R&D team um, is located here. So it's pretty efficient for the startup. Fantastic. Glad everyone's well. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. I know uh, we talked about some of your university degrees and how you got into the emerging technology space. Can you give us a bit of a story um, for our viewers on that? Yes, with pleasure. Absolutely. So I actually have chosen the technical education. I just realized that probably I will be more competitive Like if I go for STEM education, it was late 90s at those times, even though it was like, it was pretty challenging for me to choose. And uh, I started um, uh, getting my engineering degree of telecommunications. At those days, uh, you know, mobile technology was emerging and first mobile phones were uh, uh, out there. And it was actually five years uh, education at that university. But then I realized that I also want to go to Europe and uh, I was admitted to Technical University of Munich and Hamburg University of Technology. And I decided to go for the latter one because there was a dual program. I was getting my degree in computer science and also the second degree in international business and management but I ended up to write my thesis actually at Technical University of Munich under the supervision of a great professor and it helped me to get my first job at Siemens corporate technology research and development and Siemens you know is a huge it's global company and um, my years there at R&D department really helped me to to boost this interest between what we have in R&D and how we can actually take this to the customers. So the whole idea was of corporate technology was applied innovation. It was fundamental research, but also applied innovation, like what can we take tomorrow to the market? How we can leverage all our uh, beautiful innovations and uh, get some practical outcome. Um, And after quite some years at Siemens in Germany and in St. Petersburg, I joined uh, EMC, which was acquired by Dell Technologies. And also it was a center of excellence, meaning like R&D organization. And my job was still uh, pretty much about joint research activities uh, with top innovators, uh, startups and uh, research institutions uh, globally. I mean, in US, in Israel, in Europe, um, in India, in China. And uh, that was always about emerging tech and uh, what is the next wave of technology and how we can leverage that. So what drove you to start Tavori anyway? It's, uh, it's an amazing software that um, you don't need any prior knowledge of 3D content creation, uh, obviously driving virtual reality experiences. And then we'll get into a few case studies later. But how did you come up with the um, concept and what was your part to play in the design of it? Yeah, so first of all, we are three founders behind Tvori and uh, each of us has uh, his and her own motivation. My personal motivation was uh, I, I was always passionate about building the company myself and building successful business. But it was super important for me that it's technology business so that it's it's really innovation driven and it's like practical innovation around democratization of some things we do today. And my personal passion was to push the world a little bit from pure consumption to creation. 
Um, and uh, from just uh, consuming all this type of content we can get, including gaming, to, to more creative and uh, like delivery type of uh, things. Uh, my one of my co-founders, Victor, who actually came up with the idea of uh, Tfuri because uh, he's a three D artist and animator, and uh, it was lots. Of, it, I mean, it's for everyone. I think in this three D animation, you can learn traditional three D tools for years and be happy because you already spent ten years learning some traditional three D software packages, and then you start using them. But he was struggling the way that it's it's artificial for our brains to interact with 3D models on a flat 2D screen. So something should have changed, right? So it's it's not right, you know, to do so many operations to just rotate your 3D model, right? If you can imagine that we can just do it like we do in real life. So when VR started, I mean, the new wave of VR started back in 2015, 14. It, it became clear that VR can help us democratize those things. And our third co-founder, Dmitry, he was the early adopter of virtual reality. He won numerous VR competitions, including the one by Facebook. He's a genius developer. And it's all turned out to become a story which actually allow us to democratize the content creation, to really make it accessible. And also to allow creators to have fun and focus only on the creativity part rather than tech, you know, and learning menus. And I personally was blown away uh, with VR that you can really behave yourself like you do in real life. If you want to throw away something, you do it. If you want to take something, you do it. And you've mentioned design. This is a unique selling point of Tfori, that uh, we, from scratch, we were designing Tfori like we are born. So we were very, very, kind of had a very high standards of how the user interface should look like. We didn't want just to migrate uh, web type of stuff to VR, because the user will feel that this is some cheating. They want to understand clearly why they're creating in VR, that this is really the, the game changer. And, and still, we try to design it in such a way that there are no questions why you're doing that in VR, that this is so natural and so close to your real life behavior. That's great. I mean, the first design I created was in Tilt Brush, of course. <laughs> of course, like many others, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a wow experience. I mean, it's yeah. a, a feeling uh, that you get just from um, basically creating this virtual world around around you. Um, you just that, express that, yourself, yeah. Yeah, it, that's exactly right. I mean, is that part of the inspiration here originally for, for the product? Uh, you know... It was actually almost the same time when Teal Brush and then Quill appeared and Tfori and a couple of other softwares. So the originally the idea was also like, you know, drawing in 3D, but when Teal Brush was there, the focus became uh, purely on animation. So Teal Brush is an amazing app which really allows you to to just express yourself and build amazing virtual worlds. And the team behind Teal Brush are really talented engineers and, and, and they did it so beautifully. So this story, um, the very first release went live in 2016. The whole idea was, I mean, because animation probably, 3D animation was the hardest part, right, behind 3D content creation. Because to get even like one minute of animation using traditional software, it, it's very time consuming and it's knowledge consuming and skill consuming and you need to spend quite some months, you know, to learn uh, Maya or 3DX Marks or even Blender to, to start getting something you expect from your animation. So, and then we had a question, so can we democratize 3D animation process? Because honestly, there was little innovation since the Pixar ever first Toy Story, the ever first fully computer animated movie probably like 30 years ago. And, and, and still we were doing 3D animation the same way, more or less, um, on a flat screen. And uh, VR finally gave this uh, unique opportunity to do 3D animation so differently. And we were the one who introduced real-time animation in VR and then uh, editing our spatial curves, keyframe animation. And, and this is still what differs us from other immersive creation tools. 
Fantastic. So let's just get more into the product for a minute. So I know mm -hmm. we talked before that you don't need any prior knowledge of 3D uh, creation. Um, so where do you get the software? Can you just talk about the library that you can drag and drop and the models and the images? And I know you've got sounds you can import and all that, all that sort of stuff. Can you give us some um, yeah, examples on what that looks like? Yeah. So before I jump into that, I will need to make some remark. Uh, when we started, the Tori was focused on consumer market. We expected that anyone can tell a story. As soon as he immerses himself in Tori, you can start animating and building. And I mean, my five-year-old daughter was doing that like immediately. Uh, start animating like characters. And after three years, we realized that uh, the adoption of hardware is still getting the pace, right? And uh, unfortunately, the headset is not available at every home and uh, every desk, even in the big companies like big animation studios. Probably out of, I don't know, 100 animators, just few of them do have the hardware. The Quest is going to change that and standalone uh, headsets is going to change that. But given we are a startup and we really have, want to survive till the day when it's all finally uh, happens, we had to change to be enterprise focused because we realized that we need to work with a team that already have the hardware so that we can really join forces. They had the hardware, they are building already for VR or AR, and they need our product. So even though Tvori is very accessible from the time that you really don't need any 3D skills. I mean, you should uh, learn as long as you go. So you're just start creating and you're learning and you can do more and more. Today, we are focused on professional users and professionals with even 3D uh, prior knowledge, you can do even more. Without, you can also achieve. Uh, so the major difference actually uh, in terminology between the powerful use of traditional software and Tvori is that in Tvor, you can become a powerful user after one week. And in traditional 3D software, you become powerful user probably after months or years, right? And today, uh, there is a subscription model and uh, the, there is a free starter version. You can get it from our website or on Oculus Store or Viveboard or Steam, but it's quite limited uh, coming to what you can import in Tvori and what you can export. The pro version allows you to really dig much deeper. You can import your own models and assets, and you can export in the variety of formats. You can export the whole VR experience, just 2D, 360 video, or um, animation to, to keep working. And we also have enterprise fashion for big companies. And the major uh, difference is that there is a multi-user mode for pitching your ideas in VR, for design review sessions. Uh, where you can really work effectively as a team. Meet in VR, it's like PowerPoint plus Zoom plus YouTube in VR. So you create, you share, and you meet, and you talk. So tell us more about some of you, your clients. I know you've worked with, you know, Cartoon Network as an example. Um, how, how are they using it? Yeah, Cartoon Network is a great example. Um, they have uh, the director of uh, emerging tech, VR and AR, Ryan Harwell, who is really innovator in his soul. They had the acceleration program for the 2D artists, meaning that those people, they didn't really have the 3D background, but the idea was to work on VR games, games for virtual reality. So they used Tvori to prototype those games, to build the layout and do the uh, initial animations. Actually, people were spending really hours in Tvori at the initial stage of the prototyping of those games, bringing in characters, animating characters, playing with the lights, with the layout, and so on. And um, as Ryan was saying, it wouldn't be possible without tools like Tvori because those th there were no alternatives for those artists, right? They're coming from very, very different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the great thing is that they released those games and they're available on Steam for free. So you can play and check uh, how they look. I think they're really funny games. Right now, they're working on the next stage uh, on the multi-user collaboration uh, in those VR games. So 
that was a very uh, beneficial cooperation for us because we've learned a lot how people are using Tvori, what's missing, uh, and uh, it was uh, great feedback from the customer. Yeah, so Cutter Network uh, is one example, and uh, it's the use case of building for VR games. Uh, Tvori is also a software for designing and prototyping VR or augmented reality apps. And here we work with uh, different companies' profiles, and there are like different examples, companies like Unity, for example. So Unity itself has Editor XR and allows you to build for augmented reality, um, but they were using Tvori to, to prototype for AR devices. Um, because not so many people um, think about it this way. Uh, when you're prototyping for augmented reality, it's very, very important for you to understand the limited field of view for your device, regardless it's an, a phone like mobile AR or it's HoloLens or Magic Leap, like whatever. Um, it's also very important to understand the depth, it, the contrast of your menu and how it interacts with the real world. And in VR, with Tvori, you can simulate your entire uh, experience. And uh, that's why uh, sometimes people think, so how can you use VR software to prototype for augmented reality? But VR gives you the re replica of the real world. So the replica means that you can really understand the distances, the depths, the field of view, you can experience that spatially. I just had a question going back to gaming as well. What's the sweet spot in regards to the, the length of these games? And also, like, is it, is it a 10 minute experience or is it an ongoing experience? Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, you're saying that the multiplayer games are, are, are coming out, which is exciting, obviously, a new way of looking at things, um, which is the Pokemon. If we had a Pokemon of VR, we'd all be happy, right? <laughs> or I think. Um, yeah. And that's what really broke out this market, you know, in the AR side of it, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. And the creation process from the network's um, storytelling, you know, it sounds like you could have something up in a, in a couple of months uh, and not... Mm -hmm. not, not and years. not like years. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So coming to Cutter Network, those games are probably more like experiences. So... Uh, you can complete this. There are three different experiences, like library of experiences. You can complete them uh, in different like time slots. It took me probably 20 minutes each, I think, to, to complete. But there is lots of some um, humor behind that, and it depends uh, how like quickly you get the idea, and probably I was not the fastest uh, player in that regard. So I, I'm not sure about the length of the multi-user um, one because it will be for the major game Jester, uh, the King, and uh, yeah, it, it's still um, under production. Uh, coming to the backflow, uh, the pre-production was happening in Tvori, like animation and layouts, and I think they were modeling some of the models in Google Blocks, another VR app, and then they exported that to Unity. So that's why we say that Tvori is enterprise ready because whatever you create it, you can export as FBX format and import to Unity to, to finalize to add the game logic and interactivity to your game in, in Unity. So, and usually for XR, I think um, for XR production, Tvori plus Unity is a good pipeline uh, and Unity is designed for building for XR and it's like very common in, in, in that regard. And your second part of the question, could you remind me uh, ah, about uh, the, the speed? So, you know, speed is definitely a great thing. And we had different numbers from NBC Universal. They were giving us like 10 times faster or like 80% like uh, more efficiency. But there are additional advantages that some people are not mentioning, actually. So advantage, additional advantage is that if you're building the virtual reality game, you really want to make sure that it, it feels like immersive. As Cartoon Network was saying and other animation studios we were talking with, when you start ideation process and when you start uh, creation process on a flat screen and then you put a headset, all these iterations are too expensive. And you can't really freely design fully immersive stuff. And what you see then in the headset feels like 
inherited all the legacy of the old technology. Right. That's why for them, it's super important to start from step zero, being fully immersed. Because it's uh, the research shows also that when you start designing your spatial apps being fully immersed, you come with very different ideas. They feel different, they design differently. So it's an addition to speed. And one more thing uh, is that you build once and you can reuse for different platforms. So what I'm trying to say that today, uh, the production pipelines like and uh, we were talking a lot about that with NBC Universal. The production pipeline for your feature film is just like a dedicated team. You build this animation sequence and that's it. If you want to build an AR game on top of that, it's a different team. You start from scratch and you're doing this AR game. If you want then to do some VR game, it's a dedicated team and you do that. So they're all isolated and there is no kind of um, help from one department to another. So when you're building uh, in VR, you can have one animation sequence and then reuse it for the myriads of different formats and platforms. So you build once, but what you expert then and build then you can use for the feature film or VR or AR or I don't know, some air book, for example. And this is what's coming. I mean, it's a long way. And I think studios probably are not really ready for this uh, uh, disruption in their production backflow, uh, but it, it's more than just speed. I mean, it's also how agile you are, the iterations and, um, and, and very innovative and different uh, content itself. Yeah, we were also talking uh, to one of the early creators of the Lion King concept, actually, um, mm -hmm. many years ago at Disney. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at where um, the animation industry is with COVID in particular, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying this is, this is going to be a breakout year for computer animation, um, particularly mm -hmm. on the side of the business. So I would imagine that would be a big advantage for you, um, you know, even though the disaster of COVID has taken the world by storm, but there are specific markets, you know, that have been mm -hmm. able to take advantage, um, unlike healthcare, of course, and education, which have been completely disrupted and travel and yeah. things like that. So, you know, do you see some of the animation studios using VR and releasing more, you know, global IP um, in, in the form that you can use through your tools as a promotional tool, um, as in a game, like you just said, do you think mm -hmm. that that is a big driver now and you're seeing a lot more interest from the market? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great uh, question. Uh, we definitely see the interest from uh, many new companies and players and not just entertainment industry, Companies are now thinking about uh, maintenance and services provided with AR apps, right? Uh, what if I'm not sending the engineer, but I have the AR app, for example, which remotely help you to understand uh, what's happening with this turbine, for example, right? Uh, the same for our space industry and for retail industry, how to make our shopping experience at home even more immersive and better and so on. Entertainment industry, I think, is a very very conservative one. Uh, we do hear more from um, some entertainment companies and right now we are working with a gaming company which is uh, a discovering Tori. I can't say the name right now, uh, but it's very promising and they're using it for previses, for previsualization. So for flat screen, which is kind of uh, uh, the use case we, we were not emphasizing right now. Um, also, I'm uh, privileged to be part of the IBC Acceleration Program, which is a new immersive uh, backflow for CGI animation. And there are studios, global studios, uh, participate as well as immersive Pixar tools like Tvori. And definitely studios are, big name studios are exploring these new backflows. They're exploring, okay, how we can replace uh, our traditional pipelines. It's, it's still pretty slow. It also ends up with the fact that not so many people do have hardware, even from big name companies, uh, like biggest studios. They're animators, they are CG artists, they're 3D artists, usually even don't have uh, VR hardware at home today. So they're exploring, they nominate champions to discover these new backflows. It will definitely take time. 
Well, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a changing world. And let's talk about education for a moment yeah. and how your tools can be used in that. Obviously, there's a big upsurge in the ARVR world and for sales, but basically because of the lack of online training that some of the university mm-hmm. schools are, you know, just weren't, weren't prepared for, you know, for what it is. Um, how do you see your tools being used, whether it's school or university? Uh, for education. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So initially, Tori uh, was pretty popular among universities uh, that are teaching 3D animation, uh, uh, CGI, uh, and uh, even three years ago, we had big interest and number of requests coming from universities. Right now, there are 375 universities. I just checked because before our interview, the number, uh, which requested the access to TFORI. And uh, when we provide licenses to universities, we ask them to show their VR lab because we want to make sure that they do have VR-ready setups. And it's very impressive. So universities around the world, most of them in the US, but quite some in UK and Europe, they do have uh, VR classes and they teach immersive tech to their students. This is very promising. Right now, we see this emerging interest and uh, not only from uh, animation and departments like that, but also uh, at MIT, for example, they were simulating uh, uh, some scientific processes with Tvori because, I mean, animation allows you to simulate any process, right? To show how particles behave or even to simulate and uh, visualize the COVID stuff, right? And, and that's why computer science departments and uh, we have chemical department that are using uh, immersive tech to help them visualize their data and visualize uh, the simulation results and how the process is. Uh, I think that the most competitive universities will um, start using tools like Tvori to build content. And when we were studying uh, four years ago with Tvori, we thought that at some point and much before the COVID times, we thought that every teacher and every professor in this university is capable to just build this immersive, so talkative lecture himself or herself. So because in Tvori, you can build an expert even for flat screen, but this will be an amazing lecture. You can teach it in VR, but you can also teach it traditional way. And uh, I think this will happen because professors and teachers are looking for the new ways to deliver content, the new ways to communicate with a new generation of students. And we also very expired that all those students are learning this new tech. And when they graduate, they will join all those traditional animation studios and uh, companies. And they would say, no, the keyboard and the mouse are not artistic tools. We just know that they are not artistic tools. We know that we can build 3D so differently. We can build 3D being in 3D, and this is much more efficient. And then this uh, disruption happened. So that's why I think education is uh, pretty prepared. There are many universities that have uh, hardware, even compared to companies, I mean, to commercial sector, so many universities are... Uh, well equipped with VR and AR hardware and they're delivering uh, courses to their students. So this makes this future quite bright for students and for companies like Tvori. Fantastic. And Inga, um, what's your thoughts just to finish up here on smart glasses and where you see that going in the future? I know you're working with Magic Leap um, and well, I've, I've seen, you know, you must have an application on there. Can you can you leave us some um, future thoughts on, on where your product's going as well? Uh, so Magic Leap is just one of the AR um, hardware uh, manufacturer like HoloLens as well. And what it can be used to build for Magic Leap and for uh, HoloLens or for mobile, just to build your prototype for the future AR app. Um, I, I think that uh, the lighter hardware we have to wear uh, outside, more naturally it looks, uh, the better adoption uh, will be. It also should be uh, more affordable to their 
mass market and uh, there should be absolutely some very practical use cases which push people to to believe in that right to trust so some use cases which would be uh, absolutely proving the case like in healthcare for doctors who already wear some smart glasses uh, to do, to have additional menus and screens uh, to do the operations or to see uh, stuff like that so um, it will definitely take time uh, and uh, I think from the hardware we have to wear air glasses we come to the very beautiful and stylish ones by Apple or by Microsoft whoever will be the first um, I don't wear glasses, uh, but I wear the contact lenses. So I believe even in their further future when we have some smart contact lenses and uh, hand tracking and everything is done. I mean, you look like a just you look like in real life without any additional stuff, but you can uh, do much more and uh, yeah, understand about the world more. Fantastic. Thanks for those thoughts. Listen, well, well done on the company. And I believe you won also another tech award at the AWE um, virtual conference this year. So yeah, thank a, you so much. Yeah, that's uh, that's great news for you. So listen, tell just to finish up, tell the viewers where they can find you. If you want to shout out your LinkedIn or and your website, that, that would be terrific. Our website is www.tvori.com. Uh, and of course, uh, my uh, LinkedIn is also um, available to join and uh, chat more. So it's pretty easy. It's I Petrovsky, but yeah, my my surname is not the simplest one. And and my email is inger at twoy which is also pretty easy to to remember. So no surname needed to send me an email. Hey, it's actually yeah. com Borswex. Fantastic. Thanks very much for your time today. Um, really impressed with the uh, the technology and, and the user cases, particularly um, around those case studies in entertainment. They're really exciting to hear about. And uh, you guys um, have a great day on the other side of the world. And uh, <laughs> we shall talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting and uh bridging the gap between uh, innovations and evangelizing about it. <laughs> Thank you again.